How many people came yesterday to... Thank you so much. I had a great time. Wasn't that fun? I had a really, I had a really good time. So, um, predictably, we are having uh, some more AV issues. Uh, this is restarting. And we've got people who are setting up, like, actual science chemistry stuff and doing shots over here. Um, so, yesterday we did a lot of the why. Uh, we talked a great deal about sort of what motivates the work and uh, what we're hoping to accomplish with it. Today is more of the, the what and the how. So... Uh, hopefully this will pop up in a second, um, and when it does, um, if we're lucky, and a bunch of other stuff don't get in the way, um, we can get started. Um, we're going to show you the micro lab. We're going to show you the online services, and we're going to show you. Oh, and Vinny's light works. So. So we're, you're you're gonna see the um, the micro lab in progress. Um, we're gonna talk about how it's put together, a hardware and software stack, and additionally, you're gonna be able to see the online services, which will be running uh, live. That's sort of the problem that we're having. Um, we will swap over to a different machine when that happens, and um, I think we should be good to go here. So. I gotta stay close to the mic. I gotta remember that. Um, okay, doke. So, if you're trying to do pharmaceuticals DIY, there are a number of pieces that have to happen. The first thing is you have to actually do the chemistry. And the micro lab, which you see being built next to me here, is the system that we've developed for helping that process and making it more automated. What that allows for is that somebody who is not super comfortable with chemistry can still participate. A lot of people look at that sort of thing and get really nervous really fast. Yesterday, I think I likened it to the difference between building a computer versus using a computer. If you're not looking to become a chemist, but you're, util you're looking to utilize chemistry somehow to do something, the skill set that you have to acquire is much less, and if you have an automated system that can help you through the hard parts and talk you through the easy parts, then you can do that. Antecedent to that, you need to be able to write the programs that the hardware will actually run. This is the recipe press, which you'll also see. And this allows you to stack a procedure together and get code into the machine so that it can execute the procedures that you want to do. Antecedent to that, you need to figure out what sort of chemistry you're doing. You need to do what's called retrosynthesis. How do you start with a starting material and then work your way from point A to point B? And of course, before that, somewhere you have to actually figure out how you're addressing your health and what you want as a drug that you want to take. So let's take a quick look at each of these. Here's how it kind of stacks together. This is a flow chart that was sort of put together. You want to, again, figure out what is wrong in a medical sense. That's your first bar there. Then you need to figure out what the active pharmaceutical ingredient. I know all of you hackers think of something very different when we say API, but API also stands for active pharmaceutical ingredient. Then you develop the synthesis pathway. You get a procedure for it. And then you develop a file that the machine will run. You run the machine. And then again, at the end, you have to actually turn your active pharmaceutical ingredient into something that you can take. If it's just a white powder, I mean, some people might want to just snort it, but like better if you put it in a pill or maybe you put it into some sort of solution that becomes an IV drip. Eventually, you have to compound it some way. So let's look at the automated chemistry. Again, Chemical automation is not a new idea. These are available commercially, but it's closed source. All the problems that come with that, of course. On top of that, they're ridiculously expensive. Five five thousand dollars, I think, for like the cheapest, jankiest model, which is the one you're looking at. You can't even buy them if you want to pay five thousand dollars because they're only sold to labs. And you know, on top of that, they aren't modular, they don't expand. So 
if you want something that does something else, you need to buy the next model up. You can't just put a new module in. And at the end of the day, they don't work very well. But you can see they're not terribly complicated. There's an inner chamber. You can see this blue fluid there. There's a little Teflon paddle that stirs. Outside, there's a jacket. And that is circulating a fluid that maintains the temperature of the reaction. And on top, there is something injecting reagents. So we don't like all of these poor features of the commercial version. So here's our version. Again, you can see it right over here. And if you'll note, they're not that much different because functionally they're doing the same thing. You got something that stirs. That's that inner chamber also with a blue fluid. There's a Teflon little paddle that spins. You've got an outer jar. Both of these are just mason jars. The outer jar has a circulating fluid and that circulating fluid maintains the temperature. And on the top, you have peristaltic pumps, which pull from those syringes to inject the reagents. And then there's a little box next to it, and that is the brain that executes all of these commands. So let's see if we can take a look at all the bits and pieces of this. Uh, this, of course, is entirely open source. You can build it yourself. In fact, that's the only way you can get it. The documentation team did a phenomenal job and you will get a wonderful walkthrough if you decide to visit our GitHub. Remember, documentation or it's not a project. You can make this whole thing for 300 bucks, probably less for most of you because you'll have a lot of this stuff lying around. And if you're not the sort of person who feels terribly handy, you don't have to worry about it. Everything either snaps together or is screw connectors. This is not like a, a fancy, difficult project where you're going to have to do surface mount rework or anything. Also, there are open ports. You can reconfigure this. If you want other things to happen, you want to control atmosphere or you want pressure or you want feedback from a pH meter, all of these things can be done because it's hackable. Because if you can't rebuild it, you don't own it. So let's look at all the bits and pieces here. Oh, right. And actually, it works. For those of you who saw what I took yesterday, you know. And boy, did I have the best glitter poop this morning. All right, let's take a look. So this is the wonderful logo and tagline for the Microlab. This was an off the cuff statement, but I thought we should stick with it. Now the micro lab itself is broken down into an architecture. All of you who are the more technical will recognize these bits and pieces. These I will be able to speak to a little bit, but they were all built by people who are more skilled at these things than I am. But if you can look, it's not terribly sclerotic, but there are a lot of different things that are happening. Here's the machine itself. And again, you're looking at one of them to the left. And let's look at the pieces. So you have the reaction chamber itself. This is two mason jars, one which sits within the other. And there's a 3D printed armature. It's called the, we call it the reactor core, which allows these to screw together so that the inner jar floats while the outer jar can have the circulating fluid. This is what it looks like if you can't see super well. That piece that you see in the top, that is the motor that runs the stirring paddle in the bottom. Here's the uh, actual core. And it comes in three pieces and breaks apart like this. Snaps together very nicely, easy to construct. Now, if you look at the uh, rest of the armature here, that purple box houses both the circulation pumps for hot and cold fluid. It also holds the peristaltic pumps, which pull from the syringes. And then there's this armature that holds it all together. Again, this is what it looks like if you can't see super close. Uh, let's take a look at the armature real quick. Now, for those of you who are mechanical engineering inclined, you'll notice that it's asymmetric. And you might ask the question, well, why would that be? That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Was that unintentional? And yes, it was intentional because our designers are awesome. So now that we remember why we're here, let's put it back together and let's take a quick look at the brain. 
Now, the brain here is, uh, again, 3D printed outside. Um, top pops off, and you can see the bits and pieces under the hood here. Uh, this is a version with an acrylic top. Again, if you're close up or you come up later, you'll be able to actually see it. It's sitting right here. And you can see that, you know, there's a bunch of wires, but it's not too much to deal with. And we can take a look at each of these individual pieces. So here again, you can see how it's wired. It's not too terribly much, and a lot of these are already ported. The connectors at the top, you'll see are screw terminals, and these allow us to connect the brain unit to the armature itself. You have a relay board. There's an Arduino that controls the pumps. The main brain is a Raspberry Pi, and then there's an interface that is this touch screen. These are really slick connectors, and it makes it so that you can take it apart. And maybe you noticed Vinny over here who managed to put this together in 10 minutes just from bringing it in cases. This is a really easy system to use. And thank you, Vinny, wherever you are. So here you can see kind of how it's broken out. You've got these nice little snap togethers. The relay board, again, controls a number of things. There is a PID module that regulates temperature. And so you've got a heating element that's going to kick on or off as it predicts the curve of temperature as it moves, try and smooth out transitions. Additionally, you've got something that turns the stir motor on and off. And also it's expandable. There are a few other things that you can do. Um, I think we had a light on one of the earlier ones. Would have been nice in this room with the mood lighting. But, um, and then again, uh, the systems run on either five or 12 volts and there's a little controller in there. Uh, you can see also here, uh, this is an Arduino Uno and the CNC shield that, I believe I said this already, but that controls the pumps. So those are essentially just stepper motors. And so it's pretty simple to have a G code interpreter just send commands to say, turn it this much. And one of the things that's important about this is that when you're doing chemistry, most steps in most procedures for doing synthesis say, add this amount of this thing, this quickly or slowly, then bring it to this temperature and stir it for this long. And so one of the things that it allows us to do is a recent update that's really great. You can say, add this over this amount of time. And this allows for a lot more things to be done. So looking at the bits and pieces, here's how they float. You can see again, the touch screen snaps into the Raspberry Pi. On the other side, you can see the Arduino that has the CNC hat on it. The bottom piece is the voltage regulator and the top is the relay control. And again, you don't have to build it like this. One of the things that's wonderful is that this is reconfigurable. If you don't like it flat and you want a tower instead, you can totally do it. The relay board, you can actually even snap in between the Raspberry Pi and the screen if you want, but you have to have a taller box. So aesthetic principles apply, remix and revisit as you see fit. Here you can see how the screen actually snaps in. And here's the CNC board. Again, it's a, it's a real simple little unit. Uh, comes in a little kit and you just snap everything together. Here again, you can see these wonderful connectors. They're really, really robust and there are a lot of wires there, but you just have to count them in and screw them down. It's not, uh, what is the term? Rocket surgery? Uh, here's the voltage controller that will give you out both uh, five volts and 12. And again, screw terminals for all of these things. A really nice system to work with. Uh, I've enjoyed it. So, um, moving forward, I'll see, uh, th this is again, that same connector and are we back? All right. Now here you see it working. Now you might be able to see it working here. It is currently stirring. Look at that thing. And just so you know, this isn't just stirring nothing, both in this video and what you see here is actually manufacturing medicine and you will watch me extract it at the end here. So it's not just a demo proof of concept. 
We've used this for many things and it works great. So I'm excited. At the end, and what you'll see me do soon, is you'll end up with the inner jar filled with active pharmaceutical ingredient in a solvent of some sort, and then you pour it through a coffee filter, and then you let it dry. And it basically looks like this. It's a fairly simple thing. You dump it out, you let it drip for a while. Now, we're not going to have time to let it dry and watch, but once it does, you can see there's this little powder that's left on the bottom, and then you peel it open, and there's your stuff. So, anybody who says, you know, chemistry is scary, or it, this sort of makes you nervous, you maybe remember some weird person in high school who abused you with, like, orbital theory and, you know, stoichiometric balancing, like, yeah, if you wanted to pursue a career in chemistry, you might have to follow that, but if you just want to use chemistry, it's not so bad. So, um, I'm going to have to sort of walk through uh, this system, uh, these next two systems, and then we'll swap computers, and then hopefully I'll be able to show this to you live. Um, one of our guys has a stack of note cards and pens. I will take questions at the end, but you got to write them down, and then I'll collect them. Now, this is if you have general questions about anything we're doing and or... If when I do the live thing, you want to see if we can figure out a way to synthesize your molecule of choice, I probably won't be able to do a lot of them. But if somebody has a good, interesting one, we'll pull it down and take a look. Okay, so uh, who's got the cards? So look at this gentleman in the nice shirt here. He'll be walking around. Raise your hand if you want a card and write down your question. So if you're trying to figure out a reaction procedure and you go into the chemical literature, it's difficult because it's not really a procedure. It's just, here's how I did it. So there's a lot of decoding. Again, it's not necessarily the only way to do it. It might be the easy way that somebody found. So it's highly subjective. Of course, it also has a bunch of jargon that if you don't have a degree in chemistry, might be pretty hard to deal with. And on top of that, you have to dig through the literature to find it. Now, one of the things that I'm super excited about is once more people start using this, if you say, hey, I figured out how to make XYZ on the micro lab and you build a file for it, you can just trade it. You can just torrent your drug of choice. I mean, shouldn't you be able to download everything? Why not medicine? <laughs> So let's look at this wonderful system that's been built. This is hard. Let's look at the easy version. This is this wonderful GUI. And you'll, oh, you may have seen this. This is our uh, little uh, little captcha here. So uh, select our pharmaceutical companies which have not settled for over 500 million US dollars for off-label promotion and kickbacks. If there are none, click, yeah, yeah, okay. All right, moving on. You can see there are two different types of steps here. One is the dark blue. That's something that's actually automated. That's something that the computer is doing. Then the turquoise, that is a human step. So of course, the machine can't load itself full of chemicals. It has to ask you to do that. But there's a touch screen and it will talk you through that procedure. It says at the beginning, do you have the proper ingredients? Do you have this much? Is it in the solution? Okay, load it into the proper syringe. Are you sure you're there? And then the hard part for a human, which is trying not to watch the water boil while something stirs for 18 hours and making sure that the temperature is just right, the computer takes care of. Again, it's a perfect division of labor the way most things should be. So you can see we're gonna scroll through. This is the procedure for Savaldi. This was the thing that we were talking about yesterday. And you can see there are plenty of automated tasks. And at the bottom, there's some post-processing that has to happen that's done by the human. That's why you see a lot of the turquoise in a row. And on the right, you can see when a particular step is selected, it has parameters. And you can go through and say, do you want it to stir? Is it cooling or heating? What temperature do we bring it to? What degrees? And for how long? And it's just that easy to edit. Again. It also supports branching. This is a big deal because the machine is not gonna know 
if things aren't working, but the machine can ask you to check. So let's say, and this is a fairly common thing in chemistry, something just doesn't dissolve, right? So you've stirred it in solvent for a long time. It will say, are there still particulates? And you can then tell it yes or no. And if it says yes, then it will continue to stir for you. And it says, come back in another 20 minutes and let's check again. So nice little linear choose your own adventure and you can build branching processes. Again, one other thing about this that I am super excited about is that additionally, if you have some sort of chemistry that you want to do that maybe isn't so complicated and doesn't even require something as sophisticated as the micro lab, this still supports it. If you just need something to talk you through a process and have some contingencies, make sure you check X, Y, Z, you can still trade ideas this way. So when we figure things out, we can tell each other and we don't even have to meet each other. We can all just post it and be friends. Because I think a lot of us remember having stuff like that when we learned other things, but somehow it's not out there for medicine and chemistry yet, but it should be. So uh, this is the moment when I was going to hit the HDMI switch. I'm going to instead go through, show you the next tool, and then at the end we're going to swap to the other machine and we'll show the things uh, live. So the synthesis pathway, this is the, this is Chemhactica. This is a system that we started in 2018, I think. It's gone through several iterations. It's uh, got a new kernel. It's much more efficient and you can ask it whatever you want. So for those of you who have a particular chemical you'd like us to look up, this is what it's gonna look like. We're gonna pull up Wikipedia. We're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom. We're gonna go and look for the SMILES code, which is an open source system for encoding either, both, I should say, both molecules and chemical reactions into an ASCII string. You have to click on show and it pops up. You grab that. You copy, you paste it into Chemhactica, and it'll draw the molecule for you. In fact, at the collective, we use this just for either generating smiles codes or drawing things. It's It's got all sorts of utility. And for those of you who are super chemistry geeks, you'll see that there are eight other modules within this as well. Typically what happens, which I'm gonna show you in a moment here, is that you will just ask it to say, what is the simplest way I can get from point A to point B? but there are so many parameters that you can tweak. You can say, do not do anything that has a controlled substance as a precursor because those are hard to find. You can say, don't use any precursors that are too expensive. If you want to have safety parameters and say, don't use anything as a catalyst that's a heavy metal, you can do that as well. Additionally, it will hypothesize if you ask it nicely. But for the most part, it is not doing that. It's looking through the chemical literature, all of the chemical literature that's ever been published, and it's combinatorially looking for different pieces of the reaction that you're trying to create. So you click on perform one step, and that's basically shorthand for show me the easy way. And when it does that, it will pop up either one reaction or a series of reactions and you can go in and ask it to evaluate. Now what you see here is that one box is in blue, that's your target. Those two green boxes, that indicates that those are commercially available and you can just buy them. It will come up with things that are not commercially available and those boxes will be red. You can then click on those and say expand node, which means if I can't buy this, how do I make that thing? And if you've got something terribly complicated, you may have to work your way back a ways that's the thing that says tree builder. It'll do all of that automatically in the background if you ask it. So when you click on the reaction, here you see the smiles code for the reaction come up and it gives you a lot of parameters. You can then ask it to evaluate and it will give you the solvents that you need, the temperature at which it should work. And again, how, how well it expects it to work. So you can get, purity and yield guesses, which of course are dependent on conditions, but it'll give you a, a good guess. This was Savaldi. This was the molecule that we were talking about yesterday. 
And just so you guys can see it again, here's what it would look like if you found it in the literature. This is the reaction. Don't get too nervous if chemistry makes you nervous. We're starting one step here. We asked it to do one step and it showed us a way to do it in one step. This ring of fluorines on the right with the oxygen will break off and it will leave an empty space. And that space where the oxygen was is going to make friends with this other oxygen on the other side. And yes. And for those of you who remember, this is indeed the thing that we were trying to target. Um, I'll also show you this. Uh, those of you who were here yesterday saw this wonderful 3D version of it, but the same thing happens. The ring breaks off, and then there's that free little stick, and there's a little connection, and there's your molecule. So let's play with this. I think that, uh, if I'm not mistaken, we're at the point where we can switch over computers yeah, this is this is getting into the biochemistry of Savaldi, which is exciting. And if you want to hang out, we can talk about this at the end. But um, I'm just going to switch machines real quick and see if they play nice. So the thing you're about to see, if I can get this machine to play nice, is that this hopefully has a live net connection. Um, I'm sorry. Um, one of my guys is out there who said he's going to help me with this. So we're actually on a live net connection. I'm going to step out of the way while he does this. We're accessing our own website. You're going to see it happen. Please don't all jump on there as well. Like it's live. You could, but we don't know if it'll support 300 some odd people. So just let us get through this and then, and then take a look. Everybody cool. All right. Thank you. So bear with us for a moment while we try and get this thing rolling. Or if it's not rolling, maybe my other screen is live and I can talk about something else while this other computer comes back to life. You guys see this uh, big bunch of ribbons here? Is that what's on there? Okay, cool. So just to talk about Savaldi real quick before we take requests and look at the system. In the inside there, you'll see a little corkscrewy thing. This looks reminiscent of DNA, it's RNA. What you're looking at is part of the protein that sits inside of hepatitis C, thank you, that allows it, thank you, that allows it to replicate. And that bright green bit, that's Savaldi. And the magic of it is that it comes in and it binds where one of the bases from the RNA is and stops the replication in its tracks. This is unprecedented. It's amazing how it works. And again, it's so effective that it acts as a cure rather than just a treatment. It can work and your immune system can actually catch up and eradicate it from your body. So, all right. Let's hope the demo gods smile on us and we're going to switch over. Everybody ready? I, I can't see anybody out there. There could be like three people. So, like, I need a little more. Is everybody ready? Awesome, now we're talking. Uh, so now let's look at how we can help these touch sensors. Okay, I touched it. All right, here we go. Yeah, you see a little jellyfishy thing? Okay, cool. I lost I lost my screen. Um, it'll all right, so here, we'll just do this from scratch. Here we go. So here's Chemactica. Oh, switch the tab, I just minimized it. Where is it? I lost it. All right, never mind. I'll do a fresh one. Here we go. Come on. You can do it. Maybe you can't do it. We had it a second ago. Uh, dude, I, I'm, I'm struggling here. So, uh, again, as, as soon as this comes back up, you'll see that same screen that I showed a second ago. I'm just taking this out. Okay. There, that's a little better. Can you guys hear me better this way? All right, cool. Thanks. I'm just going to do this. I'm more comfortable with it. I don't know how I dropped the thing. So, you'll be faced with a page, and it'll have a... There it is. Yeah? Cool. Can you guys see it? All right, cool. It's... Uh, the aspect ratio is a little weird. But here's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to grab Wikipedia here, and we're just going to look for your drug of choice. 
And um, again, soon I'll get a stack of your requests, but there we go. Um, and I'll just do Savaldi. Um, I'm typing in the dark, but let's see if it'll search. You know, this makes me so nostalgic for when I was a kid and we had dial-up modems. Um, so, yeah, I'm not sure how viable this is going to be at this juncture. Um, so while this is loading, I'm just going to switch gears. Uh, who has my note cards? Okay, good. We just passed me some. Sending requests to intake-analytics-wikimedia.org. This may or may not be a slow process. But. Okay, cool. All right. So, um, I'm going to start with looking at some of the drug requests. Somebody says, testosterone, please. Um, yeah, that's a hormone. Doable. Can we synthesize estradiol? I'm sensing a pattern. Okay. Ah, Vivance. Somebody here was nice enough to actually point out that there are some problems with this. Even after the patent has expired last year, I still have to pay $200 a month. Yeah, that sounds fucked. Let's, let's maybe fix that. All right. This one I don't know. Uh, Mometasane furry treats asthma and eczema. So I don't know. So one thing, um, yesterday somebody came up and asked me about monoclonal antibodies. I'm sure a lot of you have seen monoclonal antibodies in the news. They are this miracle thing. Unfortunately, they are too complicated for us to do. It's a macromolecule. They're gigantic. The way that you manufacture them is not the same as small molecule chemistry. A rough idea is if you can write it on a napkin, then you can probably do it over here. If it's big, not so much. So, uh, can you get time release capsules for slow relapse meds? Yes. So that's in the compounding phase. There are plenty of um, ways to do that. The, interestingly enough, I'm going to hazard a guess. This is somebody who wants Adderall XL, okay? Like just, maybe not. But in the case that you do, here is a trick. The way that Adderall XL is manufactured is that there are those tiny little spheres that are inside the capsule and half of them are coated and half of them are not coated. It just means that some of those dissolve instantaneously and some of them don't. It is designed, not just practically, it is designed specifically only to be the same as taking half of one and then taking the other half four hours later. So, best time release system, look at your watch. Can you make insulin? Oh my God, isn't this a fucker of all times, man? So yeah, we're super angry about that one too. Uh, insulin is something you have to sort of bioproduce. You can do it. What we're trying to do right now, actually as we speak, is replicate a system by which tobacco will manufacture insulin endogenously. Now you can't smoke it, but you can dip it. Um, this has been demonstrated to work. We're just trying to steal it because it's not commercially available. But imagine you just grow some tobacco in your backyard and insulin's free. Just like in that old tweet. Do any reactions require cooling? Yes, absolutely. Are you working on that? No, we already worked on it. So if you look at the machine, you'll see this thing under the foil. That's the cooling side. There are two things that circulate. There's a heating module and there's a cooling module. Often you have to keep things cool. If you have an exothermic reaction that's gonna not be happy when it gets too hot, you have to keep it cool. So you will have a system that has either ice and water or ice and acetone or ice and isopropyl alcohol. And these will give you different set points that will be able to control your temperature. Oh, look, this came up. All right, cool. Is everybody cool with this that I'm sort of going back and forth and answering questions as we go? All right, cool, thank you. I appreciate the encouragement. Again, it's so dark. It looks like I'm here alone. 
Could you make injectable medications like insulin or Humira? So this, again, is a question not so much of manufacturing of the actual molecule, but in terms of compounding. You can make injectable meds. You take that powder, you can put it into injectable form. If you do that, please be careful. When you swallow a pill, if it's a little dirty, it's not going to be that great. If you take a needle that's dirty or a fluid that's dirty and inject it into... Oh, God, did I break it again? Let's hope it comes back. All right. I'll need somebody to log me back in. Um, if you're compounding things for injection, you have to practice sterile technique. Now, this is totally doable, okay? I don't want to scare anybody and say, don't do it. Be careful. No, be competent. You can learn sterile technique, but it is something that requires attention. Here's an example, right? Standard of practice for sterile sterility training, your hands don't leave your line of sight or you've broken sterility. And here my hands haven't touched anything and then you adjust your glasses and it's over. So a real easy lot of mistakes to make. Okay. Benzonatate. I'm going to guess that's a, like a Valium type thing. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure, but again, if it's a small molecule, probably doable. Somebody else is asking about Vivance. All right, cool. We got more stuff. Um, what, what? All right, cool. A lot of people asking about Vivance. Oh, Modophenol. If somebody just wants one now, just ask me. I think I have one in a pocket here somewhere. Okay, cool. So let's, uh, so here, I will skip over here. And now that Wikipedia is making friends, let's look at Vivance. Since so many people are asking about it. Vi Vance. Is that the correct spelling? By Vance. There's an N in there, right? Vance. By Vance. Is that correct? All right, let's give that a try. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, thank you. All right. Um, all right. Okay, our hotspot apparently went down. All right, we've got uh, more questions. I am a software engineer and a med school dropout. How can I help contribute? Come say hi. Where are you? My God, come make friends. And like, I'm serious. I know that a lot of times people will come up on stages like this and say, no, we really want help from anybody. It doesn't matter your skill set. We can use the help. I'm not lying about that. Seriously, if you say I have no technical skills, I'm at DEF CON because somebody dragged me and I don't know how to use my smartphone, but this seems cool. Seriously, come fucking say hi. We need all of you. No joke. Oh, there you are. Yes, especially you. All right. Do you have more business cards? All right. Yes. But this is the important thing. Yes, we have a bunch of business cards. If you want some, yeah, I'll pass them to you. But the big deal is not that we made business cards. The big deal is that you can make business cards. It's really, really easy. Six dots on a piece of paper, let it dry and put it in a bag. There is a, not a person here who can't do that. So you want a business card? Come get one. Please make a bunch with your friends. And if you have some anarchist collective or a bunch of geeky friends who are hanging out somewhere and you want, let me know. I'll come by and do a workshop and we can all just hang out at each other's houses and make abortion cards. Does that sound like a good plan? All right. Call me. Ah. There was a second part to this question about purity and dose determining. Yeah, so the thing that's the thing that's hard for most people who have seen modern chemistry to really grok is that it's entirely possible. Oh, we got Vivance. Oh, look at that. All right, cool. Is that you don't need all the fancy machinery. You know, you talk to people who work in chemistry and they talk about things like uh, high performance liquid chromatography, gas chromatographs, uh, NMRs. All right, so you see the smiles code thing here? I, I think it's against crawlers, but you've got to click to show. 
and then you grab it like this, and if I can just doop, 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 and then let's click over. So, here we are. Let's click this in here. We'll do a little paste. Boop. And may take a minute. Again, it's querying a machine that's very far away. Um, but wet chemistry has been done for hundreds and hundreds of years, way before there were electronic machines to check our work. There are plenty of ways to check for purity. The simplest one is called a thiel tube. It's a little piece of glass that's a loop. And then you take a tiny little thing that looks like a miniature um, test tube from like a dollhouse. You stick it in and then you start heating it. And then you'll see your powder turn from powder to liquid. And most things have sharp melting points. And if they melt at the temperature that you expect, you know that it works. And if it's off, you can do a little interpolation, just a little ratio. Don't get scared by the math, it's just a ratio, seriously. And you can calculate your purity. I'm gonna try and click and see if it'll bounce over. Um, in the meantime, I will go back. Everybody still cool? I, I know this is like just so dramatic. We're gonna figure it out. But like, you know, if, um, if you're on a regular uh, net connection, it just pops up. It takes like half a minute sometimes, depending on how uh, complicated. Okay, what CAD software does the team use? I haven't the foggiest idea. Um, somebody knows. Yeah, free CAD. All right, moving on. Um, this is still working, maybe? Should I click it again? Here, will you fiddle with that? Okay. Would it be different to get these equipment through airports sending or across national or international borders? Um, so this all came from very far away. Yeah. Uh, East Coast. Uh, we, I mean, not that our people aren't super experienced in smuggling. They are, but it, those skills were not required for this. People typically don't give you shit. It's it's just a bunch of computer stuff. They might ask, but it's not it's not that weird. International borders, slightly different thing. Um, uh, I can't talk about it in public, but there are maybe some war zones that you've read about in the news where you've been trying to move things. You can get them across. So we're trying to do our bit that way, and if you're doing that, it's doable. Sorry, I can't be more specific in public lest I be dragged away before the talk ends. Everybody still cool? All right, thank you. Is there a crowdsourced community for tackling a procedure as a group? Oh my fucking God, there should be. Now, here's the thing. There are two subreddits that are like super sleepy. Um, I believe one's called like they both have something like biohacking in the title and there's not much going on there. What we would love to see happen is this start. Now, whoever wrote this question, please help us start this. I'm not kidding. This keeps me up at night because all of this stuff that we do, if now don't get me wrong, I am so grateful that all 300 of you are here, but if we are the only people who figure out how to do this, we failed. So please, let's figure out a way to talk about it. If somebody has a way to generate a subreddit or just create a thread where things are popping a little more, that would be spectacular. Um, any looking at Ozempic Wagovi? Fuck no. You shouldn't be taking that shit. Leave it for people who actually have diabetes. I'm sorry. Also, you don't want your retinas to detach. It's not a good look. Ah. I was anticipating question, this question. Are you still working on the mouth bacteria? How many people know what this is in reference to? Okay. Short answer. Yeah. It's done. We still need to change one last thing, but it functions properly. So it's going to be probably a couple of months before we actually release it. And I'm getting a notion that this is all toast. So here's the thing. Go to synth.forthesevinegar.org and you can just do the thing that I did and you'll see that it works. It's really impressive. I'm sorry I couldn't show it to you live. 
but I will answer a few more questions and mention one other thing. How do you plan to keep Chemhactica up to date? Well, that's a fair question. Um, it does work within the ecosystem of open source software. There are, we're sort of maintaining one fork. The heavy lifting was done by some other people. Um, but there isn't a whole lot to update, really. It does crawl through a database called Reaxis. And any time that you recompile, if you use that database, or, or I don't think you even have to recompile, you just have to point it to an, the updated version of Reaxis, and that should do it itself. Um, with the rise of AI, oh, oh. Would you utilize AI to make your device better? Do you think it would make it better? I mean, I know mansplaining as a service is real popular these days, but kind of a bad look. Um, no, okay, but in all seriousness, we have been looking at trying to build some systems that will help you navigate the scientific literature because taking technical jargon and boiling it down is something that the large language models seem to be good at, but we've been having trouble trying to get it to work because it makes shit up. Um, oh my goodness. All right. I know there are still more here. I, I got a five minute mark. Let me say one more thing before I step off stage here. If this work seems worthwhile to you or interesting or fun, come join us. We need your help. We need it now. Think for a moment, if I were to say, somebody's dying outside and you can help me save them, I just need you to come with me and help me, you'd do it. And if I say now that if you write me an email and we start working together, that we could save millions, why wouldn't you do that? And you don't even have to join us to join us, just build your own. Figure out things that we didn't, use it for procedures that we didn't think of, make it better. Make it new and teach people. There's no better thing that you can do as a technically adept person than to teach what you know to somebody who doesn't know it yet. We can make things so much better, all of us together. Please come chat with me after, write to us, or don't and just make it yourself. Thank you all so much for coming.